I'm Oliver Ray Alleron from Artspire. You're watching Loudwire. Stay tech. Uh, so for me, trying to get into doing extreme vocals uh, for the first time was didn't seem like something that I was intentionally like, oh, I'm gonna try to pay rent off this. Uh, it was because I wanted to be in a band, but I had no musical skills. So all you can do is sing, and if you don't know how to sing, then all you can do is yell. So just by process of elimination, you know, you end up yelling um, when you're jamming with your your band, your your, your family, your friends, or whatever. You end up just yelling because that's all you can do and then you know I think a big part of learning how to scream is like writing you end up writing lyrics and then you want to yell them and you know you don't play an instrument so you got you're the one that's writing the lyrics so it developed from there it wasn't really an intentional move I just happened to write and I also happened to not be able to play an instrument so I ended up just yelling when I first started doing vocals uh, I didn't make any of the sounds that I wanted to make. I took a lot of influence from Chino, from Deftones. Um, but couldn't sound like that. Um, also, Glenn Benton, but couldn't sound like that. I didn't realize that he was doubling his vocals. Also heard Dying Fetus on a really, on a mixtape and was like, there's no way anyone can do that. And they could. So I was kind of left to figure out my own thing to do. I always wanted to try to be a mix of David Vincent and Phil Anselmo when I was younger, where you could hear what I was saying and there was power, but it sounded demonic. So I tried to do that with my first band, Enchanted Fairies, um, and that was before I got into speed. Not the drug, but um, the pace of vocals. Uh, yeah. The throat is a finicky bird, um, so whenever you start doing you know, intense vocals, um, I think that a lot of people go about it the wrong way. I certainly did for the first few years, and you just learn through process of elimination, trying different things with your body. You know, if something hurts, you eventually figure out a way to circumvent it so it doesn't hurt as much. And through that, I kind of learned how to perfect um, what I consider my go-to tone. Um, and that involves bypassing your throat, focusing on your breathing, focusing on strengthening your diaphragm, and really enunciating properly. Focusing on all these pinpoint, you know, marks uh, when you start singing and when you go into a song You want to write it so you can perform it properly. You want to write in where you're gonna breathe You want to write in how much pressure you're gonna add to each line So I try to do that more and more with each song that I write so I write smarter rather than harder So I can have a better time performing on stage and you know, eventually it, it won't fucking kill me My reaction from my parents um, from playing this music was pretty lackluster they don't really care what I do because we're pretty un undereducated I'm not from like a rich family where that well clearly um, where they're like oh you should have been doing this like they were kind of just hippies that were like yeah skip school fucking skip school and if you want to play metal play, we don't care we, we don't give a shit so they were encouraging in that regard and it let me just be free to do whatever I wanted which I thought was helpful didn't expect that it would ever pay for my white claw outside of the Pizza Hut but it did and they were encouraging and that's cool and I think that's an important part of playing any kind of any kind of music at all is you know having support from family and friends and also the most important thing that I'm gonna bring up right now is having friends that tell you when you suck because when I hear shit fucking bands or shit singers and I'm not gonna name any names because I don't need to I don't need to play that game because a lot of people say the same thing about me but I when I hear a shit singer it's because none of their friends sat them down and said dude you need a few more years in the garage, or you need a few more years, or you need to stop doing that shit. You need honest friends, and you need honest family, so that's key. If you have that, you know that you can progress, and you're gonna have good constructive criticism. So if you got friends out there, if you're a friend of a vocalist, and he sucks, fucking tell him, please. Talking about cupping the mic is fucking a boring conversation for me. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, because there is no real social network of vocalists that really matter. 
which is funny because when you're on tour, like the guitar players get together, they talk shop, the drummers talk shop, bass players, the vocalists are kind of like, uh, you want to get a beer. So really to try to create some sort of like, you know, gossip or some sort of like taking a stance on some pol political issue of vocals is fucking ridiculous. I think that however you achieve a ridiculous sound with your mouth, you should do that and nobody should fucking tell you that that's cheating or that that's inappropriate because there is no fucking textbook to how this is done. You're allowed to make whatever sounds you want. There's bands that don't even fucking have lyrics and there's bands that pretend they do and they don't say any of it. If you want to cup the mic, you want to stick it up your ass, do whatever the fuck you want. If it sounds cool to my ear, I'm going to enjoy it. Hopefully other people enjoy it. That's the bottom line. Pre-show musts uh, for me have changed throughout the years. I used to be of the opinion like I went full circle. I went like you don't need any tea. You don't need you know anything you can just yell and just it doesn't matter you know and then i tried like throat coat tea and i was like oh this actually kind of works but i also think it's just that i'm drinking something that's not alcohol before i'm playing so that kind of helps me i think the lemon honey thing is bullshit i see guys do it honey is just sugar and lemon is acid and neither of those things are good for your throat so i don't really understand why you're gonna drink both of those before you go on stage i also hate it when vocalists of extreme metal bands warm up by going fa la 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 really loud in the green room. Don't fucking do that. Nobody on the tour package likes it. They're all making fun of you behind your back. <laughs> and it doesn't help you sing death metal. That's a fact. 